first of all, I want to thank everyone here for coming and supporting uh, the seminar today that's being thrown by Griffin Fitness. Uh, a couple of things before we get started. Uh, don't feel that uh, you need to stay for the whole thing. We understand you have lives, and we thank you for whatever support you can give this morning. Uh, also, if you have any questions, we're going to have a Q&A, a few during and after. So as, you, as we go through this presentation, as your thought process and questions come up, write it down, whether on your phone or uh, write it down on a piece of paper. That way we can, we can fire those answers as best as possible after. So, and just to give you a little rundown of what we are doing today, uh, no doubt it's a health seminar that we're throwing. Uh, Russ, over the years, has, has built this up into this. Uh, we are in a career where uh, PT is very isolated between trainers, but as you can see, we have collaborated with ones from all the way down from AG with Heidi, and really just trying to build that collaboration between knowledge and trainers. And last night I was Googling, uh, what is the lifespan of a personal trainer? It's one to three years. Why is that? Because they don't continue to gain knowledge. But we have something different right here in this room. We have people that want to learn and that want to share. So we just want to say thank you to those trainers and thank you for being here today. But as far as the layout, uh, we are going to have uh, Heidi, who's going to do the blood analysis for us, the gut and digestion part of the show. And then we're going to have Russ and Marissa do a little uh, interview on her transformation and how they have worked as a married couple to do that. So, And then as well, we have Justin Groff, all the way from Arroyo Grande, to drop his knowledge on us today. So thank you for joining us. So with that, Russ DeLeon is going to go ahead and start with you. Thank you. I just again want to echo a lot of the things that Dave said. Thank you very much for your support. Sure. <laughs> Put me on the hot, hot spotlight, that's why I was sweating. But uh, no, again, thank you for your support. Um, the thought process and vision behind um, me wanting to get together was to help educate and motivate you in the community. Um, there's only so many ways or paths that I can help to reach ones. There's other ways that people come across other trainers that might be able to reach you personally and touch you in a different way. So I thought, why not get together with different trainers in our local area, build some camaraderie, build some um, networking, so to speak, to help benefit you. So a lot of time when we think of personal training, uh, personally I've seen a lot of ego in the business. And so, I want to push that aside and work together with other fitness professionals to help educate, motivate, uh, bring something different to the table that I really don't see anywhere else. And uh, I really believe uh, Dave, Justin, Heidi, um, those are the type of people that they are. Their first thought process is, how can I help you? And that's the type of people that I want to attract um, and be around. And, and if I uh, in there's another trainer back there. <laughs> uh, yes, and so I want to make sure and include everybody. And in, in, sorry, I'm a little bit nervous right now, but uh, <laughs> as you can tell, <laughs> I want to I want to uh, make this a fun event. And if it goes well, we may continue, uh, you know, going forward in the future and build upon it. That's that's my my goal. Okay, and I'm done. <laughs> That's <was> actually it. <laughs> Can you do that again? <laughs> All right. Well, with that, we're going to move ahead with the seminar, and we're going to invite up Heidi Speaker. She's going to tell us a little bit about herself, and then she'll go into her part of the, the seminar here. Heidi. Man, isn't Russ awesome? I just have to give him a big shout out. Like, as soon as I met him, woo, yes. That was for you, Russ, that clapping. Oh, Just, I don't know if you missed that. <laughs> okay, yeah, Corbin. <laughs> Corbin, if you guys don't know, he runs Heat Nutrition. Um, I know a lot of my clients have been asking about a meal prep service, and I'm like, I don't know, meal prep service here, sorry. And that's not something I want to take on at the moment. But I just found that he does a meal prep service and I just picked up a bunch of meals from him last night, and I'm super excited to try them out. 
I did try your protein donuts, and there are some in the back, and those are fabulous. If you just to, you know, if, if you guys put protein in anything, it automatically becomes healthy. Just FYI. <laughs> <I'm> just <kidding. laughs> um, no, but so it's ironic. I well, my name is Heidi, by the way. Um, we moved here to Santa Maria just a few months ago. My husband grew up here. Um, Rob Speaker is my father-in-law. He's actually a trainer as well. And probably like the fittest 70 year old I've ever met in my life. He still surfs like a lot. He plays beach volleyball. Um, him and his wife are just like, you know, the epitomes of health in my mind. And um, I remember when I first met my husband, we actually met in a cadaver lab. I was dissecting cadavers and <laughs> he came in to study and, you know, was love at first sight because he was obviously the best looking thing in the room, with, in a room full of cadavers. <laughs> um, so anyways, we, we hit it off well, and I'm so grateful to have met him, and I'm grateful that he is kind of on the same page as me as far as like health and fitness goes, and I feel like he's actually been my inspiration in a lot of ways, and I love, um, you know, Russ and, what's your wife's name again? Marissa, that's right. <laughs> Um, you know, that they're a partnership, they're a team, and I think that that's so important uh, when it comes to health and fitness to have your significant other on the same page as you. And if you're not there yet, that's okay. You know, it's a, it's a work in process. And sometimes, like me and my husband still sometimes bounce back and forth, like I'm like super dedicated and he's like doesn't care. And, and then sometimes he's super dedicated and I'm like, I don't want to think about it right now because I have too much going on. <laughs> so... Um, but I think it's good that you guys support each other and that, um, you know, there's that partnership, that team, teamwork there. So a little bit about me. When me and my husband met, I was actually on the road to becoming a physician assistant. Um, I've always been very passionate about um, the healthcare field, about helping others. Um, I've had shoulder surgery twice on my right shoulder and just going through that whole process, um, you know, being with a lot of healthcare professionals and physical therapy, um, it really opened my eyes to like how I could help others going through something that I've been through as well. And so I got my bachelor's degree in exercise science. My husband and I met both in our last semesters, and he was accepted to dental school in San Francisco. Long story short, um, I, I wasn't able to get into PA school because... Um, you know, I wanted to live with him in San Francisco. <laughs> and there wasn't a very close PA school around there. And once I kind of realized, like, this dream of mine wasn't going to happen, and I, you know, I'd been so, like, tunnel vision on this one goal for so long um, that I didn't really think about what else I could do or what else was out there. And, um, and anyways, my husband, you know, while he's in dental school and, and I was realizing this dream was crashing down on me, he asked me, if you could do anything and money wasn't an, an issue, what would you do? And, like, first thing that came to my mind, hands down, was fitness. Sorry, I don't know why I get emotional. Um, <laughs> but I'm like, fitness. And so he kind of just, like, helped steer me in that direction. And um, I trained for my first bodybuilding show because I realized, like, up to that point in my life, I'd had like my in shape and my out of shape, and like that was it. And I wanted to kind of push past my limits of what I had already achieved at that point and see what I, you know, what I could do beyond that. Because I knew that as a trainer, I would be asking people to do things they'd never done before and to push their body to a limit that they never pushed themselves before. And I wanted to go through that myself before asking that of others. And so I found really good coaches. Um, they were not cheap. And my husband was in dental school at the time. And I didn't have the, the best paying job in the world either. So, um, but I felt like it was really worth it to invest in good coaches and to do this right. And so I did. And I'm so grateful. I think that that investment has been worth every single penny and more. Um, and anyways, I went on to compete and became a master trainer at, our, at a gym, in one of the biggest gyms in San Francisco. And I was training people nonstop from 5 a.m. to noon, five days a week, 30-minute um, sessions, just bam, bam, bam. Like, people were looking at my arms and like, hey, I want to train with you. I want arms like that. 
Um, so it was awesome. And then we had our first baby, and then we moved to Vegas, where my husband did a residency in um, orthodontics. So, and then he just graduated. So now we moved here, and he's an orthodontist um, in Santa Maria. Pretty exciting. And then we finally opened up a home gym um, just out of our house here. So I feel like my dream is being fulfilled and his dream is being fulfilled. And we're so excited to be starting our lives here in Santa Maria. Um, so anyways, now I want to get on to <laughs> the health seminar. Um, <laughs> when you say the word health, I just want you to think of like what comes to mind when you think of health. I think that health is such a broad general term. And there's, you know, I... I thought it was ironic I'm giving a health seminar today, and all week I've been so sick and just, like, laying in bed every day. And I'm like, man, I should, like, have the secret sauce that, like, makes me immune to everything, right? <laughs> but I don't. Um, but I was reflecting back on, you know, like, throughout my life, I feel like I would get sick maybe once a month. And it was awful. Like, I would get probably what I, about what I have now, like a sore throat, achy body, um, about once a month, and I hated it. I'm like, why do I get sick all the time? And I try to always be super healthy. I feel like it made me, you know, a lot more health conscious than most other people. Um, and then when I, like, really got into health and fitness and educating myself, I feel like it, it definitely got a lot better. And then also just um, learning more specifically about gut health. Um, I probably only get sick, like, once a year now. Um, so, when we think of health, um, you know, it's, it's a very relative term, that we all kind of have our own version of what is healthy, and so kind of what I want you guys to think about today is what is healthy to you, and like what is your ideal vision of healthy for you specifically, because we're all so different, we all have different lives, we all have different genetics, um, and I think that we all have to think of what, what being healthy is for you specifically. Is it just drinking more water every day? Um, is it, you know, eating a specific meal plan every day? Is it just getting into the gym every day? Is it just doing something healthy every day? Um, and, you know, along with health, there's a lot of different aspects of our health. And I love Russ actually mentioned this in his IG story the other day. And I was, like, such a big fan because... Um, after my second baby, I, I suffer from pretty severe postpartum depression, and I never really valued or understood the importance of mental health until going through that. And I think that, you know, after going through that, I really had to focus on not just on the physical health, but my mental, my spiritual, and my emotional, along with my physical. Um, and so I think that when you have all four of those aspects of our health, that's like when you're the strongest. Um, so today, I want you guys to come here, and I want you to leave changing something in your life. Um, and even if it's just one small thing, and I want you guys to all have notes out today, because if you don't change anything, what's the point in coming? Um, you gave up your Saturday for nothing if you don't go and leave here and change something in your life. Um, so today I want to speak more specifically about cellular health and, our, and more specifically about gut health um, because there are so many different aspects um, that I, I want to focus on cellular health. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, and I actually want to start off with this little video that I think is so fascinating because there's so much going on in our bodies that we just have no idea. So this little video I'm going to play, do you mind dimming the lights? Um, lights? Oh. Yeah, I'll dim those. Okay, so I'll start this video for you. Um, this is called the inner life of a cell. So this is just, you know, a bunch of different stuff that goes on in our bodies. And it's pretty fascinating that all of these things are happening right now without us even thinking about it or realizing it.
Okay. I just wanted to play just a short clip for you guys so you can kind of understand the complexity um, behind all the cellular processes in our bodies. Um, a lot of times we think of food as fuel. I've heard the term, you know, food is fuel. And I have to disagree with that because Calling food just fuel dumbs our bodies down to simply a machine. And our bodies are so much more complex than a simple machine. Everything that we put into our body has a very specific effect on the outcome of our hormones and just everything that happens in our body. Um, okay, so... Right here, we have the ten. We have ten systems in our body, ranging from circulatory to digestive, endocrine, exocrine, immune, um, all the way to respiratory system. Of these systems in our body, I want to throw this question out there: which which system do you guys think takes up the most energy? You can raise your hand, shout out an answer. Immune, muscular. Digestion. I know a lot of the guys like to say the reproductive. Just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so actually I heard it back there. Marissa was right on point with the digestive system. Um, now just another question. By how much do you think the digest... Like how much energy do you think the digestive system takes compared to the rest of the other nine systems? Throw a percentage out there. Close. All right, Russ cheated over there. No, I'm just kidding. 80%. <laughs> the digestive system takes 80% of our energy. All the other systems only take 20%. That's pretty remarkable. Um, and so because of that, like all those other systems, that's because all the other systems in our body depend on the digestive system to function. Um, all of the food, all the nutrients that we're getting from our digestion, that is what makes all of those other systems in our body work. So you can imagine if our digestion is compromised, how that compromises everything else in our body. Um, so today I'm gonna talk about the six keys to health. We have enzymes, probiotics, nutrients, oxygen, water, and waste removal. Uh, these are the you know, six keys to health. Um, all of these, you know, this is what our digestive system kind of relies on, is these six keys to health. Um, so number one, how many of you guys he have heard of the word enzyme? Yes, okay, good. Um, enzymes are not probiotic, so those are different. We're gonna be talking about the differences of those two. Um, enzymes break down food on a chemical level. So I think of an enzyme as a key that you're gonna go in, you're gonna unlock the door, and that basically opens all the nutrients to come out of that food. Um, and so we have different enzymes for different foods. For oils, fats, sweets, you have lipase. Um, for milk and dairy, you have lactase. How many, how many people in here are lactose intolerant? Yep, we have a few. So that basically means your body is not producing the enzyme lactase to break down the milk lact or the milk protein lacto lactose. Um, and so because of that, you get a lot of indigestion, right? Your stomach hurts. There's all these other outer effects that are um, that are that show because your body's not able to digest that nutrient. Um, and so we have all these other ones, protease that digest proteins, amylase, which digests fruits, and cellulase, amylase. Um, and so, yeah, that's all I'm going to talk about for that right now. <laughs> so just know enzymes break down your food on a chemical level. Um, and then, so... Enzymes, anything that's heated over, I, I believe it's 118 degrees Fahrenheit, that will kill or destroy the enzymes. Um, so that's why like raw foods are so important. Fruits and vegetables are so important. 
They're going to be higher in nutrients, contain your enzymes. Um, they promote healthy blood. They cleanse your colon. They improve your mood. They increase alkalinity, um, and they boost your energy. Cooked foods deteriorate vital nutrients. They destroy all the essential enzymes. Um, they lack nutrition, which will increase your appetite. If you're not getting the nutrition your body needs, you're going to be wanting to eat more of that food. That's why we just want to eat sweets. Like, Well, that's one reason, because they're, they have such little nutrients in them that our body has to eat way more to get you know that small amount of nutrition from that food. Um, okay, so now I'm going to talk about probiotics. So these are your good bacteria. I like to call them the gatekeepers. So probiotics line your whole intestine and your stomach, or they should line your whole intestine. Um, and they do two things. They let the good guys in, and they keep the bad guys out. So they absorb and let in all of your nutrients from the food that was broken down by your enzymes. And then they keep all of the bad bacteria out, um, which should just pass through your colon and out your out your, your other end. <laughs> so the benefits of probiotics, they improve mental health, they improve mouth and teeth health, skin conditions, lung health, heart health, liver, basically all those other systems. If you, have, if you take a probiotic supplement or you have a good, strong probiotic lining in your gut, um, it will improve everything else because your body's going to be absorbing more nutrients and it's going to be keeping out other toxins and bacteria from your body. How many of you guys have taken an antibiotic? Yeah, almost everybody. Um, how many of you guys eat food from the store? <laughs> okay, everybody. <laughs> um, so antibiotics, antibiotic, anti means against, biotic is the bacteria. So that's going to kill bacteria. It's good if you're really sick, right? Because it will kill that bad bacteria that's making you feel awful. Um, but it also, unfortunately, kills the good bacteria. One round of antibiotics can actually destroy, like, so much probiotics in your gut that it can take almost up to two years to reestablish that gut health, that, that probiotic lining in your stomach. Um, so... My advice or my suggestion, don't just run to the doctor, you know, if you have a simple cold and get, in, get on an antibiotic. Do what you can naturally to heal your body um, before resorting to an antibiotic. And I don't, you know, I, I'm, I'm very much more so on the, pre, like, the preventative side of health and the, I guess, holistic, you could say. Um, but I do think that Western medicine has its place, and I think that I don't know, I really think that they should combine efforts more so, and I think that we shouldn't be afraid of one or the other, but, um, you know, educate ourselves as much as possible and, like, weigh out the pros and cons of both and do what you feel is best for yourself or your children if you have children. Um, so my other thing with this slide, 20% of antibiotics come from pills. The other 80% come from foods that we get. So... Um, you know, if you look at meat in the store, a lot of times it will say, or it, like organic meat will say antibiotic free. And the reason they advertise that is because it is a big deal. <laughs> because most meats, most milk is not antibiotic free. And by putting that food into our system, it is destroying our gut health. Um, so next I wanna talk about nutrients. Um, isolated nutrients versus natural ingredients. So how many of you guys take a multivitamin? I know a lot of us do. Um, how many of you guys have heard that multivitamins are just expensive pee? <laughs> yeah, but we still take them because we want to just cover all our bases, right? Um, so the reason why we... So we can't absorb... Um, a man-made isolated nutrient like we can a whole food. Um, and that's because you need all these other cofactors, you need enzymes, you need chelated minerals in order to digest like even one simple nutrient. Um, take for example vitamin C. When you see ascorbic acid on a label, it's not actual vitamin C, but it's something, it's actually hydrochloric acid plus high fructose corn syrup. And it goes through this big chemical process to make a molecule 
that's similar enough to vitamin C to where if you consume it, it has to steal magnesium and other nutrients from your body in order to make vitamin C in your body. And really, we only absorb 7% of that. So have you guys ever heard of the phrase, um, you rob Peter to pay Paul? That's kind of, that's what ascorbic acid is doing, is it's robbing of these other systems in our body in order to make vitamin C. Um, whereas if you get vitamin C from a whole food, it has everything that it needs in order to be digested and absorbed and utilized. Um, yeah, so... I do, I'm doing, I do this thing called live blood analysis, and I'll be doing some here today if you guys want. Um, we'll be doing a sign-up, and I'm doing a discounted rate today of just $35. Um, if you come to my, um, if you want to do it after this, I, I charge $75 or three analyses for $50 each, so $150 for three analyses. Um, but this is, basically, I take a small finger prick of your blood, I put it under a microscope, and then I have my microscope hooked up to a TV monitor where you get to see live in front of you what your blood looks like. Um, it's a pretty remarkable thing. I think it's amazing to see what's actually going on inside of your body. So often we look at the mirror, right, and we want to be healthy, and we look at the outs what our outside looks like, but we don't often get to see what the inside of our body looks like. Um, so this is what healthy blood looks like under a slide. Um, when you have healthy blood, you're, you'll have greater performance, greater recovery, greater energy, greater mental clarity, and an improved mood even. Um, you'll notice those dark circles are red blood cells. Um, ideally, we want those all the same size and the same, the same shape. Um, the plasma is the space in between the red blood cells, and we want that relatively clear, nothing in the plasma. Um, that allows all the red blood, flow, red blood cells to flow freely um, and distribute oxygen and energy to all the cells in your body. Um, so some things that I see under the microscope are fungus and bacteria. So these are what some of those look like. Um, and the, these come from compromised gut health. So when your probiotic lining isn't quite intact like it should be, we see a lot more bacteria flowing into the blood than there should be. Um, so how do we fight back? So my big thing is if you're not getting it in your diet, you want to supplement that back into your diet. And the best way to do that is through whole food supplements. Um, the company I found that I, I go to for most of the supplements I get is called XR Nutrition. Um, I don't want you guys to think like, oh, they, you know, I just came here for a big sales pitch. I'm not here to just like give you a big sales pitch. Um, but when I find something that I, that I found to be effective, that I love get, you know, giving to myself and my kids and you know, that I recommend to my clients, um, I've seen my clients' health improve significantly. Um, when taking these. And this isn't the only supplement company that I recommend either. So, and I'm more than happy to, if my clients have supplements they currently take, you know, I always look at those and, you know, give them my opinion. And some are great, some are not great. Um, and you never really know until you try it. Um, the thing I love about XR Nutrition is all of their supplements come from Whole Foods. So they are grown to peak ripeness at their farms. They're freeze dried and cold pressed and then made into their supplement. So they have all of the key enzymes, the chelated minerals, um, everything needed for your body to like have maximum absorption. Um, so now I want to talk about oxygen. And I love this picture here because you, you see um, the tree's roots. That's like where it gets all of its nutrients from, right? Um, is the soil. And then I think, you know, of our blood system, um, our circulatory system, that's how we derive all of our nutrients. So once we eat something and it's digested, um, it's then absorbed into our bloodstream. And then our circulatory system, or our blood, is what takes those nutrients to all of the cells in our bodies. Um, and then next is water. So Water is like a key. I suggest all my clients, they drink, like, aim for a gallon a day. 
and fill up your gallon jug and just carry it with you so you know how much you drink, um, how much you have left at the end of the day. <laughs> um, because water is like the number one thing that you should change in your diet or your habits if you want to become healthier. Water and sleep. <laughs> Um, side note, those are like water, sleep, and then nutrition, and then fitness. That is what I recommend my clients. And a lot of times when people want to get healthy, they do it totally backwards. They're like, oh, I need to go start exercising first, and then I'll get my nutrition. And then they kind of forget about sleep and water because I don't know why. <laughs> That's hard to do, right? Um, anyway, so water, these are some of the benefits. Write down some of those that you feel you need help with and let that be your motivation for drinking more water. Um, helps digestion, metabolic functions, eliminate toxins, provides el elasticity to muscles and joints, reduces water retention. So if you get swollen like ankles or feet or swollen hands, you need to be drinking more water. Um, you guys want to, you guys done writing? Okay. All right, now we're going to talk about everyone's favorite. Oh, yes. I do have a quick question. Is there uh -huh. a place where we can put down our email or something so that we can get these? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Awesome. Yep, I'll send it to you. Um, okay, we're going to talk about waste removal now. So that is a dryer lint sheet. Have you guys ever taken the lint off of your dryer sheet? Maybe most women, maybe not the no, maybe not the men with wives. So just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it, this is a this is a filter, and we have filters in a lot of things. Maybe cars. Maybe that's more relatable to the men out there. <laughs> um, or a vacuum cleaning filter. Um, we often have to change these filters, or else they get clogged up, right? And then they spit that waste right back into the system that we're trying to get it out of. And so that is what, our body has its own filters as well, liver and kidneys. And um, we need to be supporting our liver and kidneys as much as possible as well, because those are the filters for our blood. They're going to filter out toxins, um, undigested food and nutrients. Um, so in a blood analysis, these are two things that I see if you have a back, basically a backed up liver and kidney. Um, those are called uric acid crystals. Have you guys ever heard of gout? Yeah, so gout is like a buildup of uric acid in your blood. Um, and that those, um, so red blood cells are very pliable. They're very soft. And they, like when you watch a live slide, the red blood cells just kind of like move very gracefully and they'll kind of smack, like get smushed in between each other but then they expand back out. Crystals are very hard and very dense and they don't move. And so what happens is those cr hard crystals get trapped in your joints and they cause a lot of inflammation and joint pain. Um, and so this is pretty cool because, you know, we, in a live blood analysis I can see these signs before it gets to the point of gout before you end up going to see your doctor and say, oh my gosh, like I can't, I can't move, I can't work out anymore, I can't do all these things that I enjoy because my joints hurt so bad. And just by simply supporting our liver and kidneys, we can help prevent any of those things from happening. Um, so XR Nutrition, they have a liver and kidney cleanse. It's two capsules before you go to bed for 30 days. And I generally recommend someone do a liver kidney cleanse like once a year or every six months, depending on like if you drink alcohol, you'll probably want to do it more frequently. Um, if you take a lot of like ibuprofen or other medications that your liver has to process those things and it's very hard on our liver. Um, so you want to be supporting those liver and kidneys more frequently depending on the damage that you're doing to your body. Um, so... Those are the six keys to life. Um, and just remember, like, real food is the best because you're going to be, whole raw food is the best. Um, a lot of times I like to do smoothies in the morning. I even will, like, put, like, raw broccoli stems in my smoothies. <laughs> 
I promise if you guys try it, you won't even know it's in there. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of things that you can do to get creative with incorporating more whole foods into your diet. Um, and if you guys have any suggestions or questions, you can, we'll kind of turn the time over now to like a Q and A. Um, let me just think if there's anything else I wanted to say. <laughs> Um, you can follow me on Instagram, too, and Facebook. I try to give recipes and other tips um, on, the, on my social media. Um, also, follow Russ and all these other guys because they have awesome tips as well. But, yeah, let's just, I'll just open it up now. If you guys have any questions based on, like, what you saw here or just any other questions, feel free to, yeah. Um, so I love, again, I'm, I love the XR Nutrition Probiotics. I've had clients come in that were taking like a random brown of probiotic and I tested their blood and it was still, you know, not where it should have been. And they got on the XR Nutrition Probiotics. The, the important, the thing that I love about theirs is they have a prebiotic as well. So there's a probiotic and a prebiotic. Probiotic is the actual bacteria. A prebiotic is a food for the bacteria. And studies have actually shown that prebiotics are actually more effective um, than just a probiotic by itself because a prebiotic, prebiotic, you will recolonize the existing bacteria in your gut that was already naturally there, whereas a probiotic that you take, you're going to try to transplant new bacteria into your system. And your body only like holds on to a percentage of that. Um, but a prebiotic by feeding the bacteria that's already there and the, 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 the bacteria that you're putting into your system, it's going to be a lot more effective in retaining it in there. Um, so I meant to bring, I'm, I've been sick all week and I've just dropped the ball on so many things. <laughs> but um, I'll be, I have a website on there that you guys can go to for XR Nutrition. Um, or if you can write it down, it's Whole Fitness, W H O L E fitness.xrnutrition.com and then um, yeah I love their stuff so their capsules and for my kids I'll actually break open the capsules and pour them into like their smoothies or their oatmeal um, it's just important not to heat them because you don't want to kill the probiotic that's in there so I'll if I'm making them oatmeal I'll cook the oatmeal first and then, then I'll open up the capsule and mix it in and then give it to them um, yeah, I don't know if you, does that answer your question? Yeah, okay. What's that? Whole Fitness, yeah. W-H-O-L-E fitness dot XR Nutrition. Just like XR Nutrition dot com. What would be a prebiotic whole food? Um, so the, the best, like, whole, um, prebiotic, it, it's called xylo-oligosaccharide. So it's, it's not really in any food, um, but you can actually get a prebiotic powder and like add that into your smoothies or other things. Unfortunately, XR Nutrition doesn't have just a prebiotic fiber, and that's something that I've just started like experimenting with and seeing if I notice a difference taking the powder versus like a pro plus prebiotic capsule. Um, but. Yeah, so I, you can Google, like, on Amazon, a prebiotic powder and add that into your regimen. Mm -hmm. This is kind of like an observation, I guess. So I have a child that has tremendous gut issues. Mm -hmm. I've been changing with doctors and specialists for, since she was born, so she's 13 now. But um, this tastes like the stuff that goes on in the Exactly. That's one thing like I love about the live blood analysis is it's a very customized thing. And which like I I'm all about like customization. I never give my clients like the same cookie cutter meal plan or the same cookie cutter fitness plan because I, I truly believe that we're all so different and what works for one person doesn't always work for the next person. 
Um, and so with a live blood analysis, it's like, you know, we see where, what your, where your baseline is at. Like, okay, we look for all of these key indicators for your blood. I take pictures and videos to see, you know, where you're at currently. And okay, all of the things in my life up to this point have led my blood to look like this. <laughs> and then we develop a specific regimen. Um, and then, you know, depending on what we're trying to monitor, you know, I may do a follow up in six weeks or three months. Um, some things take longer to notice a difference in your blood than others. And so we'll do the follow up and see if what we were doing was working. Is there any improvement? And if there's not, let's change it because you don't want to keep wasting your money on these supplements that aren't working or eating these specific foods that aren't, you know, don't seem to be helping. Um, but it, again, it's, keep in mind, like with gut health, it takes up to two years to really restore um, what was damaged or lost. So, I mean, you have to be very regimented and very consistent on a plan to see results and benefits. Okay, I haven't heard that, but any seconds on that? Has anyone heard, ever heard that? Prebiotics? Cool, yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah, all the fermented apple cider vinegar. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to get the same potency. Totally, that's why I think like whole foods are best, but then if you are lacking in something, I think that's when you add in the supplement to supplement your current regimen of what you're already doing. Um, anything, anyone else? Yeah. That's hard. Like, I think that that takes time. Like, it takes time to really learn to love yourself through all the phases of your life. And I think, you know, I, I try to really, like, reiterate that in my clients as well. Like, um, just the importance of, like, loving your body through every phase. You know, I've, um, I've done bodybuilding shows. I've also had babies, you know. And, like, I feel like my body's just kind of seen it all. <laughs> and, like... <laughs> But there were sometimes like I didn't like I love my body more sometimes like when I was pregnant and like had the most body fat percentage than like when I was super lean and like a week before I was stepped on stage. Like sometimes that's like the hardest when I'm like the hardest on myself because I'm like trying to achieve this specific look and I'm like, you know, but I, and I think what's helped me the most is just um, focusing on like the things that you can control. And that's what I tell my clients. Like, I have, you know, I'm a very like vision, like I um, highly recommend vision mapping and like just envisioning like what you want your future self to be, what you wish you were like right now, and like holding that vision in your mind and like reflecting to that constantly, um, because, you know, I think that. Let's see here. Where was I going with this? <laughs> um, I totally lost my train of thought. Um, but with um, vision, vision mapping and getting a vision, <laughs> um, I think that, oh yeah, so I have my clients like make a vision and bring that to me. Like, let's say it's an overall weight loss goal. Let's say they want to lose 30 or 50 pounds or whatever it may be. 
And then I tell them to kind of like, forget about that. Forget about the weight loss goal. That's my focus now. And then I give them a plan. And I'm like, this is what I want you to focus on. Focus on the things that you can control. Focus on the meal, the meal prepping. Focus on the getting in your workouts. Those are the things that they can control, that they can find satisfaction and gratification in. And just forget the scale. Um, I still weigh them in when they come see me because I think that's my marker of like, is my plan working for them or is my plan not working for them? Um, if they haven't dropped weight and they have a weight loss goal, then obviously my plan wasn't effective for them. So then, then I change things up so that they can, um, you know, focus on the things again that, that will get them to that ultimate vision. Does that help answer your question? Okay. Can I question? Yeah. I paid her to say this. I know, disclaimer, I have had people vomit before. No. <laughs> But thank you. I think that that's so important. Like, like shifting people's um, vision to like, I want to look this way, to I want to lift this weight, or I want to like get through this whole workout, or I want to you know eat these specific foods each day. Like focusing on those like healthy things rather than just looks. Like, you know, it it really doesn't matter. And as much emphasis as our society puts on it, it's like. It really doesn't. Like there are some people who look so amazing and they're not ha they're not happy and they're not healthy. And I think that like focusing on those things that will ultimately get us to that healthy place and that healthy mind again like mental health is just as important as our physical health. Um, any other questions? All right, cool. Thank you guys. Well, we thank her for the, the detailed information on your digestion. And I always think of it simply as our car is a motor. So if it's running like a Ferrari, great. Or if it's running like a four banger that needs oil change, you might want to check into your digestive system. So Heidi would be the place to start. So with that, there's a lot of aspects to fitness, uh, digestion. Uh, but there's something else that's uh, very important, and that's clothing. So we want to make sure we're dressed well, right? But in order to win a gift, uh, we're going to raffle off a t-shirt now. We're going to ask a question. How many calories are in one gram of fat? Lady in the back. Nine? Yes, you are the winner. <laughs> very nice, very nice. <laughs> So with that, note, with that note, we're going to take a 10-minute break. Heat Nutrition has supplied our protein donuts. We have some refreshments back there, and we're going to keep it real tight and start in about 10 minutes. One, one last thing, Russ. Maybe five minutes. Let's go five minutes in, yeah. Anybody that's late, 20 push-ups. There we go, yes. <laughs> well, we're going to interview now Russ and Marissa DeLeon. You know them as the owner of Griffin Fitness and his uh, dear spouse that supports him. Uh, they have gone through this amazing journey together, and we wanna, we're going to see how they have done that. So we'll give it away to Russ and Marissa. Thank you. I wanted to um, use this opportunity. The, uh, there's a lot of aspects when it comes to fitness. There's a mental and emotional aspect, and there's a transformation that takes place. And Marissa's made an excellent transformation. And I thought, what better way can you do than share your story with others? And it might reach or touch uh, somebody in the audience. And uh, maybe give your experiences on what the heck is it like being married to a personal trainer? How do you do it? <laughs> but um, just a little bit about yourself. So, you know, all of us, we see you as somebody uh, well put together. Um, a very pretty in shape fitness uh, person but tell us a little bit about yourself uh, maybe your younger self uh, growing up in Napomo so they can get to know you just a little bit 
Okay, well, hi, I'm Marissa. Um, I'm 31 years old. I was born and raised in Napomo. Um, I have a 17 year old brother. I basically grew up with everyone that is from Napomo, I feel like. So you don't just, I guess, you never forget a face. So um, when I was younger, I was always either the tallest kid in my class or I was a little of the heavier set of the class. So um, weight has always been a battle with me. I feel like I was always athletic as a kid. Uh, I played soccer my entire life, but I just, you know, obviously food was always kind of a reward or, you know, I just never paid attention to that kind of thing. I guess, you know, as a kid, you kind of notice that you know, hey, how come I don't look like that? But, you know, it never really affected me up until I probably would maybe going into puberty, like teenage years and whatnot. So. Well, let me ask you, so was food, did you develop maybe a little bit of an unhealthy relationship with food at a younger age if it was used as reward or comfort? Well, you know, being Hispanic, you go to your grandma's house and you're expected to like eat everything that they give you. So if you don't eat everything off that plate, you're insulting your grandmother. And so, you know, my grandma would be like, do you want more? Okay, okay, sure, I'll have more. But, um, you know, I was always with my, my mom's mom who, you know, loved to go into Santa Maria. So every time we'd go into Santa Maria, we'd get Bill's takeout, you know, so I was always eating like hamburgers and fries and sodas and like you know hostess cupcakes you know these things were always just a part of my my life so you know I was always overweight I guess you know as a kid and um I don't know. So tell us maybe a little bit about the obstacles or challenges that you faced because you were overweight did you have any insecurities what, what did that bring out well I I feel as, you know, I'm till this day, insecurities are still something that I deal with. And I think everyone else has an insecurity. But for me, it was always like when I was, I want to say, going into high school, you know, I still had that I was still overweight. You know, I couldn't wear certain clothes that my girlfriends were wearing because I didn't feel comfortable. So I'd always hide under like a sweater or, um, you know, just was there a particular like low point that was very memorable for you? Okay, well, going into um, I guess we'll jump forward here. When I um, obviously was with someone at the time, you know, I had already this was like going now. I'm already like what 17, 18, 19 years old. I, you know, I was in a relationship. I obviously, you know, we'd go out to eat and whatnot, but. We were about to go out, and um, it's kind of it's just so sad because I think about it. And I'm like, gosh, why didn't I say anything? But um, I had a dress on, and you know, my boyfriend at the time was like, hey, you know, I can tell you have like your rolls or your back rolls are hanging out. And I'm like thinking to myself now that I say this out loud, I'm like, how come I didn't just end this? Because why did I allow myself to be treated that way? So you know, I obviously you turn to food. You know, I I endured a lot of. Um, toxic or like negative talk and just I allowed that you know so my mental state wasn't wasn't the best so I just thought well this is my life this is how I'm gonna this is how I'm gonna be I'm just you know so food was always like I would go to my room and shut my door and like eat and watch tv because that was always just my zone so do you feel like maybe you're not being confident held you back from being the person that you wanted to be or the person that maybe you truly felt that you were? Do you think you were being held back from that? Of course. I think that it was hard for me to want to try new things or be around people. So I've, I've always been very closed off. I'm very shy. So a lot of people probably thought I was snobby and I'm just not the nicest person. But it's just because I have my own stuff I'm dealing with, so I'm, it's not it's not easy for me to just, you know, go out there and be outgoing. I, and if I am, I'd rather blend in with everyone so nobody notices me. I'd rather not be, like, the life of the party. I'd rather just kind of be with the crowd, I guess. So if we fast forward a little bit, there had to be a turning point for you. What was the turning point that helped me 
a transition for you? Well, I want to say, you know, my mom coming to me and telling me, hey, I don't think you are healthy right now. She goes, I just see you as yours. You're looking like someone I don't know. And I think, you know, hearing that from your mom, that's obviously like really hard because I don't think she was coming from a bad place. I think it was just like her telling me like, you know, you need to do something. Maybe, you know, is everything okay? And then also, you know, at that point, I, you know, decided to break off that toxic relationship that I was in. I was, that was seven years of my life that I wasted. And I do feel like that now, like it was a waste of my time. And, um, you know, at that point I was at a new job. Um, and I had a girlfriend who actually was telling me, hey, you know, if you are interested, I'm working out with a trainer and um, have you ever considered a personal trainer? And I said, you know what, at this point I'm, I'm desperate. <laughs> I'm gonna do something because I can't, I have a gym membership. I don't know what the heck I'm doing there. I'm just doing cardio. And I think that that's what you need to do to be thin or whatever. But so I decided to hire Russ. So do you feel like asking for help, that was uh, something that it was very important, building up your support team to get you where you're at? Yes, because I am the last person to hold myself accountable. I think I don't have enough self-control when it comes to like, okay, if I'm not at the gym or if I don't have someone saying, hey, come on, let's go, I'm, I'll am i probably just sleep in or, you know, I'm just like, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. But the fact that I had, you know, you as my trainer, it was like, you're holding me accountable. It's like, okay, I'm paying you to get me into shape. So this money better be worth it, you know? So at this point, you know, I'm not gonna just... <laughs> the, um, so fast forward, you've okay. made a great transformation. Do you still face the emotional aspect of, you know, maintaining your current um, fitness level? Do you still face like the, the yo-yo, um, up and down mentality? How have you maintained? Well... Obviously, when I first started training or be having you as my trainer, I was at my heaviest weight. So I was like 170 pounds. OK, so at that point, I think within that year, I want to say I, I dropped like down to 40 pounds. I lost 40 pounds and that was like awesome. So then you hit a plateau because you're like, OK, everything I'm doing my my meal prep or um you know, but then you start letting little things creep back in, like little, so, oh, I can have that. Well, I can have that too. And, you know, I can drink this or, you know, so then I gained probably 10 pounds back. So it's like, okay, what's happening? Why am I not, why is this happening to me again? So at this point, um, you know, I've gone, I've done meal prep. I've done six meals a day. I've done macro counting. I've done like buying a whole workout plan, supplement stuff. You know, I, done it all I feel like you know there's always like a beginners and then there's advanced like or intermediate and then there's advanced you know with with fitness and that's kind of how I feel with my journey is I went from being like I want to be like that Instagram person and I'm going to buy what Paige Hathaway is selling me and I'm going to buy shreds and I'm going to be shred like Paige Hathaway and that didn't work so it's like at this point you know you just kind of it's trial and error and I swear like I've gone through it all to the point where I'm at this point. There, it took me from being 24 years old to 31 years old to finally figure out what works for me. So and that's that's a good honest observation because some say, well, three months or six months you can look amazing, but the reality is it takes some time and learning your body. Would you agree? Yes, I think now I have I. Actually, I want to say this year, I had a really, and like Heidi, I don't get sick that often. So I had that really terrible flu that everyone was getting in the beginning of the year. And I was sick for like a week and a half. And I probably lost, I don't know how much I, I, was, I wasn't eating. So at that point, I was like, you know, I'm going to get back into the gym because I hadn't been working out. And I was getting kind of depressed about it because it's like, that's my routine. And, you know, being married to Russ. I have become very routine oriented and I feel like that does keep me on track. You know, when you do have that, um, you know, if your daily thing that you do, I mean, that's obviously, I think a big factor because then, you know, you're holding, your, that's kind of how I hold myself accountable is like, 
if I know like, hey, I can sleep in, but I should probably just do 30 minutes, just go in for 30 minutes and then I'll be awake and I can kind of start my day. Like that's what I have to keep telling myself because I do want to sleep in at the time. <laughs> so. And in fitness, there's a lot of extremes. How have you maintained balance to kind of stay in the middle where you enjoy things, you enjoy time with friends, food or drink, but yet you balance it where you can maintain a good level of fitness, where you feel confident, where you feel good? Well, at this point now, I do feel like if I'm going to have a cocktail or a drink or I'm sorry, or like have a cheat meal, I guess, you know, I like usually Saturdays, like for an example, if I know that like we're going to go out on a date night, what I what works for me is I do fast. I will fast until that that meal or whatever we're going to do, because I I figured like, you know, I my body kind of works better that way, you know, where I am enjoying these things. And if I am hungry, I'll make like an egg or something, something to kind of just hold me over. But, um, you know, I, I figured out that fasting works for me um, into intuitive eating, you know, not just eating when you're bored or, you know, because I do work at an office. I mean, fitness is, you know, my hobby. It's not, you know, my profession. So I sit down like from nine to five and there's snacks there. And I know when I'm eating only because I'm bored. And so I have to like kind of get up and move. So I'm distracted. So those are things that kind of just help me, but it's like, I've learned that, you know, am I really hungry or am I just bored? So (laughs) it's like, (laughs) Do you ever battle some of your old tendencies or maybe uh, talking about the scale? Do you ever, what's your relationship with the scale right now? Well, right. That's a weird question. <laughs> well, you know, I'll get on it because I'm not going to lie and say, well, I am kind of curious to know, like, oh, shoot, am I eating too much or am I doing it? Am I overdoing it again? So, you know, I don't. Right now, I'm actually, like, I'm fine with where I'm at. You know, if I figured, okay, do I really need No, it's like there's no goal, like, I'm trying to lose more weight. or I just want to maintain and just, you know, if I feel good, then I'm fine. But, you know, there you just, I think everyone knows their body. So you know when you kind of feel a little, like, I, mean, I guess if you're thinking, okay, I probably should kind of check to see. But it is an accountability thing, though. I, But I don't. It's not something that I'm basing solely my fitness life on. Uh, one more question. What advice do you have for anybody else out there that maybe uh, have gone through something similar where they've, um, you know, at one time faced obstacles, challenges, they've overcome it, they're maintaining. Um, what, what advice would you have for somebody? Well, it's taken me, what, seven years? I don't, I'm 24 to 31. Okay. So it's taken me that long, you know, to finally figure out, you know, what's going to work for me. And everybody is completely different. So I, I just feel like you just have to keep going. And, you know, I'm really, if you're not positive about your journey, then that's going to, obviously the, the negative self talk, that's just going to bring you down. And then, you know, and I'm guilty of it. You know, there's times where I'm like, dang, like I'm, how come this isn't happening for me? But things take time. Little progress is progress. And, you know, just keep going. You know, don't give up. You know, if you're, if this is important to you, because health is very important, that's what's going to keep you functioning and keep you going. So it's, you know, you really just got to think about you for that. Do this for yourself. And that's just how I feel for me. It's like one thing I finally have done for myself that I can say like, wow, you know, I did this. Like I transformed who I was and I, I'm not settling for that. So just don't settle. So the takeaways, call grandma, don't visit. No, I'm just kidding, no. Thank you for sharing that for sure. Well, we got another raffle. Uh, the raffle is, if you've ever been into Griffin Fitness, you know the famous whiteboards that are on there. And every once in a while there's a quote on the top or on the mirrors in the place we have those inter- inspirational quotes. But we like to also share knowledge that way if you ever go train on your own or with another trainer you know uh, what's being talked about so one of those things that we've talked about is uh, the acronym i h i i t hit 
What does that stand for? Does anyone in the room? Our dear massage therapist, Roshni. Yes, exactly. High interval or high intensity interval training. Very good. So what you want is a hat. <laughs> Very nice. Well, we're going to go ahead and move on with the program, keep it rolling, and we are going to introduce a man coming all the way from Arroyo Grande, and we're going to have him introduce himself and talk about himself a little bit as we uh, introduce Justin Groth. Justin, let's give a hand to Justin. What an introduction. I honestly don't even need this microphone because I talk really loud, and I had a lot of coffee, so... Okay. My name is Justin. Um, I'm from Aurora Grande. Um, I have a fitness studio in Aurora Grande that um, I facilitate all my personal training out of. Um, let's go to a little story. We're going to story time. I'm going to go back to college years, okay? Now, I'm 19, 18, college. I went to college to be a mechanic. A mechanic. A mechanic. I, was, I love working on trucks. I love working on and building um suspension lifts and things like that. I was like my thing in high school, right? So I went to college and I, I went to do these mechanic classes. And um, during that, that time in college, I developed a complex like most of us do. But my complex came after the fact, not in high school really with regards to my body or the way I looked, came in my college years. And um, so during that time, I took a class in college, it was at Cuesta. <laughs> And I took a class for weight training. And in that weight training class, I, I, I kind of learned the fundamentals, not really, kind of. And I went there, and I was just, I kind of just screwed around. I saw what the other big guys did, and I just kind of took notice, and, and I, and I kind of um, imitated. And so I noticed my body building up. My, com my complex started shifting, where I started feeling a little more confident with regards to my body, et cetera. And I was still taking the mechanics courses and still trying to get, um, if you're familiar with mechanics, you can become ASC certified. And that was what I was leaning towards. I wanted to become ASC certified mechanic. And, um, but during, I was taking these weight training classes and I really fell in love with it. So I ended up ditching mechanics and I went straight into fitness. And that's kind of what started the whirlwind of me developing. Um, well, I had no aspirations of being a trainer. It was only, it was only, it was a soul selfish focus. I just wanted to be a bodybuilder. I just wanted to step on stage. I wanted to be, I wanted to compete. And, and mind you, in my life, I've never been a competitor. Not with sports, um, nothing, because I haven't been really good at anything. I've never really been good at sports, baseball, basketball. I've done them all. I sucked at all of them. And I can't even dribble a basket. See, so I'm talking with the microphone. I don't even need to have this microphone. I can still reach you in the back. But when I dribble a basketball, I can't even dribble that like without fumbling it, losing the basketball. So <laughs> baseball, I was a little better at baseball. I did that for like 10 years. But Still, I never was a part of an MVP, I never, or a, a, like an all-star league. I never was an all-star. I never was an MVP at none of those sports. And I'm not a competitive guy by nature, but I don't know, for you men, you always want to, when you see the all-star crowd or the team, you want to be a part of that. It sucks that you're not because you're not good enough. You're not good enough to be MVP. You're not good enough to be an all, part of the all-star squad. And I never really was. I never was because I never, it never, I never made it. So when I found weightlifting, I found that as, an, uh, as a, well, a complex, uh, well, I was, I was working on my complex, so to speak, right? Developing more self-esteem, becoming more, more confident with my body and the way that I looked and the way ultimately that I felt. But it ultimately, it ultimately made me, well, physically strong, mentally strong. But at the same time, I felt like in the back of my mind, if there was an all-star league for weightlifting, I'd be one in there for sure. Because I was really good. 
at weightlifting. And I don't, I'm not tooting my horn or nothing like that. I'm just saying that when it came to understanding body mechanics, it came down to, to um, certain principles of, of exercise, I was really good at it. And it just sucks there was never an all-star league for bodybuilders or there's never an all-star league for, for weightlifting. But they call that, I guess, the winner circle when you compete. If you win, right, you're kind of an all-star in that regard, right? Or at least I like to look at it like that. So anyways, um, that's what opened the door for me to compete. Again, selfish. I just wanted I do, to do this for myself. It was just it was about me becoming, seeing what I could do with this, seeing how far I could take it. And um, I was blessed to do real well in my competitive line. And, um, but at the same time, that's what led me into personal training. Because in my home gym, I, I go to a gym. I mean, I have my own gym, but I don't work out there. And here's a little quirk about me. I don't work out at my gym because I don't like working out alone. I hate working out alone. There's a few of my clients in this crowd, and they come because they love working out alone because they don't want anybody judging them. They want to be, they want to be by themselves, being told what to do. I get it. That's why I have a business. But at the same time, for me, I hate that. I, I want to be around people. I want to be around energy. I'm a very interactive person. And so I'm likely to get through the story so I can start, start talking to you guys. I want to hear some of your questions, but that's in about three minutes. So I, uh, it all started, hold on. So my mom's back there. My mom knows that I love coffee. Mom, wave right now. Wave. Yes. So my mom knows I love coffee. She calls me an addict, a coffee addict. That's not true, but I can stop anytime. And she, she doesn't believe me. Whatever, that's fine. But I love coffee because of the way that it makes me feel and it lights me up, right? Caffeine kind of gives me that dopamine increase. And that gives me a spark of a better mood. And then I'm better to all of you. So I like caffeine. I drink that shit daily. But um, I, uh, I'm getting off track. OK, so back at my gym, Fitness 19. I go to Fitness 19. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's in Royal Grandy. Um, at Fitness 19, I got ready for my first bodybuilding competition. And while I was getting ready, you get in a little bit better shape, right? You get a little bit more crisp. Heidi knows this. Your arms get more toned. Your chest gets more chiseled. But <laughs> people start noticing these things, and they're like, hey, man. They obviously they, they think that you know what you're doing because you have a certain body. And, they, and they, it obviously takes work, and it takes knowledge, et cetera. But they, they, they find more of a, um, a value in you. So they ask you, how do you do this? Or how do you do that? And so I found myself really loving explaining certain exercises. And um, the way I did things or why I performed this exercise the way I did. And so that's initially what led into me or the spark that led into me becoming a trainer. I just liked showing people how to do things. And I liked more, more along the lines of the personable aspect. I'm not, I'm not a, um, a sh I mean, I'm not, I, I don't like to just deliver information and just be mechanical with it. I'm very personable with it. That's just who I am as a human. That's my wiring. Um, and so when I would explain certain notions or certain exercises, uh, the people, I don't know, maybe they grasped it because I told them a little bit more of my relation with that exercise. Or, oh, I messed up here, and I know why you're doing this. Let me fix this over here, and do this like this, et cetera, right? So that initially led to the, the, the spark of making people better. That affected my heart. That's when I knew I had to follow it. It wasn't about making money, even though we have to pay for things. It, we want to live well. We want to eat steak. I get it. But at the end of the day, if I had to eat tuna or steak, but do something that I love that delivers a heart contraction, I don't know how to say it, but it, was, it, it, would, it would contract my heart when somebody would tell me, look, I got this result from this. I've been implementing what you said here. 
And this is all fundamental knowledge to me because I've already done this. This is something that I'm in daily. I'm bodybuilding. And you can talk, call it bodybuilding. You can call it transforming. Marissa, you went through a physique change, right? Okay, that's bodybuilding. Doesn't matter if you want to correlate bodybuilding with muscle, guy, muscle guys on stage posing in their little trunks and whatnot, or if you want to talk about somebody like Marissa that just comes in, does a daily grind, works on their body from all parameters, and develops a better self. It's the same thing. So that initially got me to really fall in love with fitness. And then you have to take <laughs> to be a certified trainer, you got to go through the book work and you got to you got to study the material and um, so gyms will hire you because they won't hire you if you don't have that certification. The certification means nothing. Literally means nothing. I got my certification, guess what I learned? Nothing. And that's honest truth and it's not because I started off knowing everything. Absolutely not. And I took a certification program that was extensive. It wasn't like, you know, a weekend program. But being a trainer is not about what kind of knowledge can I, or what kind of educational tools can I deliver to the person. It's much more than that. It's relating to the person. It's understanding where they're at and being empathetic towards that person. You don't have that, you won't be a sustainable trainer, period. You'll be lost in translation, which is the reason why one, what was it, the marker Russ put out, or Dave, Dave? One to three years for a trainer stays in business? It's like a hairstylist. They go through all that, that, that program, or that, that schooling of, um, of how to do hair and whatnot. They get certified, or they get licensed, and they don't do anything with it. And they go back to whatever they're doing beforehand. And it's like, why did you even, why'd you even go down the avenue in the beginning? Because you like putting makeup on? Because you like doing your hair in the mirror? You figure, I could do this shit forever. And then, and, then you just, and then you figure out what it really is, and you're like, I don't want to do this no more. This is boring. I want to do my own hair. I want to do my own makeup. I don't want to do someone else's. Most people don't ever make it in that, in that, in that, um, in that career set. Same thing with trainers. Because most trainers get started for the wrong reasons. They get started because they think they're going to work their buddies out. And they make money working their buddies out. That's not how it happens. You start training, you start actually getting in the, in, in the trenches of working for a gym, what have you, working for a personal studio. If you're blessed and fortunate enough to work for someone like Russ that has his own personal outfit and you can kind of make your own schedule, you got it made in the shade, man. If not, you're working for a commercial gym, which is good too, because you see a bunch of different body mechanics you get, you get to have a bunch of different extensive, um, I guess I should say bodies to work with. And you start learning more and more because you're working with so many different mechanical movement patterns, different from person to person. So it gets you a plethora of knowledge. If you're a sponge and if you're receptive to want to learn more and you want to be your best and you're not just there to work your buddies out and your buddies can't afford the dollar amount and you're like, oh, but you said you signed with me before I got... My, my certificate, man. And they're like, yeah, but, uh. And then you're out of a career. That's your career? You can't base it off that. You got to go into training knowing that I'm not going to be a millionaire, but I'm going to make a difference, period. And that's good for me because I want to make a difference. It's all I give a shit about, making a difference. If I can't make a difference, what, is, what good am I on this earth? All of you, the same thing. Whatever you're doing in your life, this is not where I wanted to go with this topic, but... We're here, so we're gonna stay here. If you are not happy where you're at, you have to make changes. Heidi was talking about the food and what we put in our bodies with regards to how our gut um, deals with certain micronutrients and such on a cellular level. If you're not happy how you feel, change it. Eat better, drink more water, sleep more. You gotta manage your stress. That's important. If you're not managing your stress, That's one of the pillars that most people don't want to admit to. But you guys, all of us have these stressors coming at us. And what happens is we become chronically stressed. 
that leads to no sleep. That leads to waking up in the morning, still being stressed out. Your brain doesn't want to be stressed. It loves cortisol. We, our bodies love cortisol. To be honest with you, cortisol is not a bad word. We actually need it in small spurts infrequently in our days. Or else getting out of bed, the thought of getting out of bed would be an abomination. You couldn't even handle that without having some form of cortisol pump, okay? Now, when, am I too loud? No. Ramon, no? Are you sure? I feel really loud right now in my head. Um, <laughs> this is coffee, yeah. So when, when you're chronically stressed, you don't make the best food choices because you're on the run or you're, or you're in between this project, you got your kids, got soccer and baseball. I understand, I hear it daily. But there never is any empathy on my end if I'm your trainer only because you are not the president. You can manage your stress better. You just have to care. You just have to care about your own physical state sometimes and mental state before others. Because if you don't, how are you gonna give 100 of you to anybody else around you or the circumstances around you? You can't. That's a, I walk people into that with that formality because I know they're gonna fail whatever answer they give me. It's a fail, it's a fail proof way that I come across with regards to if you're handling your business properly. If you're not managing stress, you're gonna go for the foods that aren't good. You know why? Because your brain is gonna tell you to. You're going to wanna search for that dopamine hit. When I say dopamine hit, that can come in the form of exercise, the healthy way to get a dopamine hit, walking, breathing, meditating, or you can go to a smoke, or you can go to alcohol, or you can go to your most common drug that you can get at any liquor store, and it's a honey bun. You can go for sugar, right? And most people are gonna do that because most people don't see sugar as a drug. But it's absolutely, the way your body sees it, a toxin, which is a drug. Not a drug drug, quote unquote. But let's call it like it is. Now I'm not against sugar, I'm not saying that sugar's bad. I'm not saying, I'm, we're not gonna have that discussion here. Me and Ramon can do a podcast on that later if you want, man. But with regard to sugar, but what it comes down to is if you are constantly not doing what you need to do on a systemic level, you're not sleeping well, you're being chronic, you're allowing chronic stress to overtake you throughout your day with regards to your job, people in your life, coworkers, friends, and you're not changing it, you deserve that. Because if you're not gonna change your surroundings, we all have the free will to change our surroundings, change what goes in our mouths. I don't have to eat well. I don't have to eat clean. I can go to McDonald's. They're going to serve me, period. I can ask for 50 sandwiches. They'll serve me 50 sandwiches. They're not gonna say, wait, aren't, don't you, aren't you a personal trainer? We can't give you these sandwiches. They're gonna serve me that shit because they wanna make money, period. So at the end of the day, I have to make a choice. You guys gotta make a choice. If you want to change, you can change. If you don't care to change, then you're going to go through the repercussions in life. And that's going to come from no sleep, dragging with regards to on a mental end, on a physical end, you're just not going to be 100. And I know that each and every one of you has understood stress to some parameter, if not on multiple parameters in your life. And in fact, you're probably going through it right now. But if you don't care enough to change your situation or change your circumstances, nothing's gonna change, man, and you're gonna continue to get what you got the last X amount of years. All I'm saying is, I didn't, again, I don't wanna go off on this topic, I was talking to you about mechanics and shit. But if you, this is the, something, sometimes I just go off in a different direction. Ramon understands this really well. I just start going off on different topics. So that's just me though. But what I'm saying is at the end of the day, if you don't care, then nothing's gonna change. And you guys came to this, right? Because you cared. Because you cared enough to learn information, you cared enough to see what was gonna be presented in front of you. You could have done anything, especially nine o'clock on Saturday. 
I'm probably going to be sleeping at 9 on Saturday, I'll be honest with you, because I don't have any arrangements on most Saturdays. But you guys chose to come. That's huge. But none of this means anything if you don't apply it outside of this and take action. None of this. It's like going to church. You can go to church. I just had a conversation with, with my fellow trainer in the back. You can go to church. And you can learn in church. And you can just sit there and see, yes, pastor, I see it. I understand. That's how God wants me. And then you leave church. And somebody sidelines you on the freeway and you're like, right? All that goes out the window. You're not applying it. So all I'm saying is what's been given to you this, this, in this form and this time here, the information, you guys have to use it. I see some of you nodding your head. Let's see if you nod your head a day or two after this. You're still nodding your head. Yeah, I remember what he said. I don't care though, honey bun, boom. Right? So anyways, I told you I need this microphone, man. But um, I love to be interactive. Maybe you can tell that. <laughs> but I want to open the floor up right now. I don't want to talk too much more. I want to open the floor up. I want to know if you guys have questions. Um, and honestly, I'll let bring Russ down. Russ and Heidi. Yeah, absolutely. Russ and Heidi. Now, what I want to do is I just want to open the floor up to Q&A. If you guys have questions, it could be anything. Anything, really. Yes. What's that shirt you wear? Oh, man. <laughs> Schmedium, baby. Yeah. Um, any question? Blue. Did you have your question? you have your hand up? Or are you just scratching your back? I think you had your hand up, man. You want to ask a question, don't be timid. Go ahead. Oh, are you sure? Oh, OK. Darn, I thought I had a question, man. Anybody got questions? Please. Let's hear them. Lisa. Justin, how do you feel about the keto diet? Oh, my gosh. You're going to talk about this because we already had that discussion on the story. Um, I, I'm just going to take that as a serious question, even though I know she's not being serious, and she's going to get it on Monday when I see her. So the keto diet, I'm not, I, we can give all of our approaches to this. I don't necessarily... I don't, I'm not against it, but I'm not for it because I'm for sustainability and most people can't follow that approach long term. And most people go into it for the wrong reasons to begin with. They go into it because they want a quick fat shed. And all of us can testify that a quick fat shed doesn't exist if done properly and done right the right way. So I, want, I would likely more address that person's mental state of mind while wanting to go on that keto, what's the reasoning for the keto? Do you want to look good for Vegas in two weeks? You want to try to shed 20 pounds? You should have started three months ago or four months ago. This should have been, because this is a process. It's not something that you do overnight. It's not something that is quick fix. So the intentions of going into keto, that's where people are, I think, sorely mistaken in the beginning. And then if you have somebody like, let's say, Heidi, myself, Russ, that wants to go play with keto, I think it's a good approach to see what our bodies can do with the, with the system, but likely it's not going to be sustainable long term. Now, carbohydrates are not the enemy. Carbs aren't even an accessory nutrient, a necessity we need in our diet. Our bodies will pro or make glucose through process called gluconeogenesis, where we can go amino acids and, I'm sorry, fats and, and uh, amino acids and turn those into glucose. But what I'm saying is we don't need that to, to, to continue our energy. We don't need that. From, from a primal standpoint, we never have needed carbs. They just were around in the form of berries and et cetera. So we ate them when they were, when they were plentiful in season way back years and years and years ago, probably like 50 years ago. But that was a joke. That wasn't funny, clearly. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we don't need the carbs. But our bodies do well with them. So I think with regards to all of us here, sustainability-wise, keto's probably not the avenue. But anyways, you have some sound up? Ditto, same Ditto. thing, yeah, no. <laughs> not sustainable, a tool in the tool belt. You can learn how your body responds, but not something long-term, yeah. 
Yeah, I, th I think, like Russ said, it's a tool. And I think that it can be a very effective tool for the right person. I mean, I've had clients who I put them on a really clean, balanced meal plan, and they didn't, their bodies didn't budge with it. And, you know, we tried keto, and we, you know, that was very effective for them. And I think that, you know, some people use it as like a, a lifestyle and they're able to maintain their lifestyle on it and they like, you know, they like it and it works for them. And I think it's something that you don't know unless you try. If, you know, this isn't working, try this. If that's not working, you know, try this. And I think keto's it's a very anti-inflammatory diet. And so I think that if you have like inflammatory issues, it can be very beneficial. Um, but I, again, I think it's a tool in the toolbox. I use it sometimes. Um, I use it for my clients sometimes. Um, but I think overall it's good to, to experiment and see what, what your body does well on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think w my experience with keto, I get like anxiety on like the third day and it's awful. <laughs> but then after it is like amazing. Cause like I'm someone who I get so hungry like all the time and I always want to be eating food. And when I did keto, like my fourth day, I was like, whoa, I feel so good. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not thinking about food all the time. And I actually really liked it. Um, but again, I, I like carbs for training and other things. And I personally, I like, um, well, just recently, like the last month, I've kind of been trying to do keto, but then I cycle carbs in, you know, specifically for, you know, around my training and other things. So more questions. So when people get stressed out, you talked about cortisol and they want to cheat on their diet and they want to eat something and kind of bring that back down and control the stress. When people want to go towards that cheeseburger or the pizza, what do you guys do different? Go for the cheeseburger. No. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that's interesting. Did you know actually that, so cortisol and um, what is the insulin cannot coexist in your body at the same time. So that's why we want sugar or carbs when we're stressed is because that insulin from your carbs makes your cortisol go down and drop. Um, and so I think that it's important to find other coping me mechanisms besides food to bring your cortisol down. Um, for me personally, I, I meditate, um, and I didn't start doing this until I was pregnant, and I came across hypnobirthing, so I, I had my kids all natural, and to prepare for that, I did hypnobirthing, so every day I would like do a hip, hypnosis for 30 minutes and listen to these hypnosis tracks that help me to relax my body, to focus on my breathing. Um, and I think that those techniques are extremely effective and so healthy for you um, to be able to consciously like lower your heart rate, to consciously relax your body, to release tension in your body. Um, and you know, even though I'm not pregnant anymore, I still continue to use all those techniques um, when I'm stressed, when I want to resort to food to help calm myself. Uh, um, so, if you're a client of mine and that that question arises, the first thing I'll say is, I need you to do 50 squats, and then I need you to do 50 burpees, and then you think about eating anything after that. At that point, they're more logically inclined to make a better decision, but that needs to be the, at the forefront when they start thinking, well, I'm stressed out, I need to go for something, a quick fix. I need to get, I need a trip to the nail salon, or I need a, a burger, or I need a honey bun. That needs to be in their forefront. I need you to focus on exercise first because I bet you, bet you, nine out of 10, if not 10 times out of 10, you'll rethink that burger after you did some exercise. So if you're my client, that's what I end up saying. If that, if that question arises. No, I, I think those are excellent points. I think leading up to it, having outlets for stress, exercise is important. And for me personally, sleep, when I'm sleep deprived, that's when I'm at high stress. So I got to make sure that I'm doing self-care, uh, make sure I'm getting my sleep in, um, taking time to, to meditate, um, to think um, about gratitude, helps me to change my mindset. As simple as going for a walk can really change, get some sunlight, get some fresh air, change the attitude. 
Um, those little simple things help me. And then not having access. I don't bring stuff into the house so that when I'm stressed, it's there. <laughs> I'm going to have to get in the car, drive you know, 10 minutes and go, go grab something. So don't bring junk in the house because then it's accessible to you. Uh, that's one thing that I do. Preventative. But again, just change the mindset uh, as something as simple as going for a little walk and getting fresh air, talking to someone, um, venting out whatever you need to, and then coming back to, okay, I'm not going to cope with this situation with food. Um, I'm going to make, make a list of things that I can do to cope with whatever situation is raising my cortisol through the roof. Yeah. Any other? I know we are running um, a little later than anticipated. But we're here. If you have any other questions, you know, we'd be happy to field some. Um, I think, too, one of the things that we wanted to do was a little uh, call to action, you know, from each one of us. Just briefly, maybe something to ask of you. Um, me personally, recently, um, I like watching all the documentaries on 9-11. The courage of those firefighters um, I, I can't get enough of those documentaries that come on every year, and it was just earlier this week. Seeing somebody who, in the face of danger, instead of running the opposite way, they run towards it. Uh, that's very inspiring to me. So each one of us has that courage inside of us. It might not be physical courage where we're going to run into a fire and put one out, but the courage to stand for what we believe in, or to have our vision of the person that we want to be, allow ourselves to stand up and make the right choices, the courage to take action towards our goals. It could be something as simple as going out with friends. You have the courage to say, you know what, I'm not going to eat that or I'm not going to drink that. To stand out is different. It's not easy. But each one of us has the courage to make choices, to stand up for what we believe in, and to stand up for making changes for our long-term vision. And so uh, I encourage you, have that same courage as those firefighters, just in a different way, each one of us has it in us. Absolutely, man. And, and to kind of trail along with that, um, you just have to give a shit about yourself. If you don't give a shit, then nothing's going to change. We just already talked about this. But you have to care. All of you could leave here today and not change anything, and you're still in neutral. If you want to change your fitness, if you want to change the way you feel, if you want to lose weight, if you want to gain muscle, whatever the parameter is, you have to care about yourself enough to make yourself make that change and deliver that change. If not, you'll stay neutral. I mean, each and every one of us has the ability to change or do things differently. Change up. There's, okay, let me address it this way. Is there anybody in this audience that loves everything entirely about themselves, wouldn't change anything? If that's you, raise your hand right now. Absolutely, right? Because everybody has a change that they would love to make, at least one thing about them. What he's saying, you have to, with regards to, I want to, you know, be as brave as those, or we talk about being as brave as the, as the firefighters were from a, from a, probably from a, a small stand, when they were kids, they wanted to make a difference on this earth and they've wanted to do so with regards to helping people. So they took the action to take all the courses and get their firefighters. Is that a license? I don't know. It's probably a license. It's something like that, but to get <laughs> credential as a firefighter because they want to change. Those same people could have stayed at home eating Lay's, sitting on the couch, doing exactly what their brain wants them to do, which is be comfortable. But comfortability never got change. Comfortability never made progression. So you can stay comfortable right now, or you can choose to get uncomfortable. That's so cliche, but it's, it's, it's the purpose of that mentality needs to be in line for you to see anything come to fruition because nothing is just going to come lay at your doorstep. And I know you've heard this a million times, but maybe you need to hear it a million and one times because that is the truth. It's the truth. 
And if you're not going in that direction, then don't expect anything. Don't expect anything to change. So if any of you have 10 pounds, if you have 10 pounds to lose, five pounds to gain in muscle, none of that's gonna happen without you being diligent with what you're putting in here, how you're treating this, and what you do externally. That's all coming into manifestation with who you are with regards to being your best self. Um, I guess just finishing up, I think that each one of us has had something stand out to you today. Um, and I think that whatever that one thing is, or maybe it's two or three, like go home, write that big on your wall, like let that one thing make an impact on your life. Don't leave here the same person that you came in today, but leave here with a determination to change, um, with a determination to become better. Because I know that you'll influence the people around you. The things that you love, that you're passionate about in life, you'll be able to more fully enjoy those things, even on a greater scale than you do currently. And that's what I really emphasize and why I do what I do is because I believe that we're all creative individuals. I believe that we all have um, purposes here on this earth and that by taking care of our health, by prioritizing our health, we can more fully enjoy those things, more fully serve the people around us and more fully um, achieve our potential that we're sent here to do. And thank you guys so much for coming. Well, with that, we got one last raffle. We got uh, a handmade by Russ's, by Russ's, that's a prototype, see how they sell. Oh. By Russ's mother, uh, it was sewn on. By hand. By hand, so you can only imagine what his underwear looked like. <laughs> I can only imagine what his underwear looked like. Oh. <laughs> All right, so the question is, if there was only one exercise you could pick, what is the most effective exercise that works your whole body and burns the most calories? The one with the, the hand up first. Running. Ooh, that's good. We're talking weightlifting now. Close. Norma? Yes, squats. Very good. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be squatting for life, so you got to make sure you're strong, strong in that area. So with that, Heidi's going to be doing the blood analysis. Uh, also, if you want to get into contact with any of the trainers here, please reach out to them now or reach one of us if you don't have time to do it today. We'll gladly give you the contact information. Thank you for supporting us. I wanted to say thank you to yes. Yes, yes, very nice, thank you. Yeah, check out his podcast on Apple uh, Podcast. They're awesome. Yeah. They're very good, very, very talented man we got here in the, right here in Santa Maria. Uh, Corbin and Allison. Yes. Allison slaved over the donuts. Yes, oh, yes. Wow. We want to thank our t-shirt model in the back there, Manuel. Very nice, yeah. thank you. Thank you for coming today. All right, everyone have a good day. Thank you for coming and supporting. Thank you.